This video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. Join a community of over 32,000 photographers that includes equipment insurance, education, and business tools made specifically for small business owners like you and I. Here we are in Edmonton. We literally just arrived and now I'm going to show you an Into Drone. <laughs> Into Hugh Into Drone Show Show. Here we are in Edmonton and I'm literally going to put this drone up and shoot an intro shot right now. This is how I shoot photos for a tourism board. I did not charge these batteries yesterday. So they hurt. this isn't even fully charged either. Oh, it's wow. Oh, my mom texted me. Come on, the light's going here. I know how to do it, you fuck. Wow, I hate you so much. Oh, here we go. What's these do? Is it easier with the ice? No. Here it goes. Hello everyone, and welcome to the unsolicited outfit of the day. We have this really big grandpa sweater. I do have a cropped top underneath, which is probably silly considering how cold it is outside. These white cargo pants also from Aritzia because I am basic. These Zara boots because I can't afford the expensive ones. I will be wearing as a coat this puffer that was gifted to me and a hat. I don't remember where this is from. Mm. All right, so our first stop today is where? Because we found it yesterday and it was awesome. We are going to this epic French bakery. Yeah. We have to go back there. We're going to be late for most of the day because we're going here. There's no time. There's no schedule, which is actually really nice. And this is kind of how we prefer to do tourism trips is just to have like one or two activities in a day. And then we get to kind of choose when or where we're going. They'll give us advice on like the best time of day to go. Not only is it more comfortable for us, but for promoting a destination, it's nice to actually like get to live in the destination a little bit and find our favorite spots. And and then like the things that aren't on the itinerary, like this random French bakery we found. So we'll take you there. Let's go. That's the bakery. just arrived in Elk Island. <laughs> it's a national park. We're essentially going to be looking for some elk, potentially some bison, to take photos of the wildlife here. We saw a few kind of on the outskirts of the national park, so hopefully we see some while we're driving in here because now that we're in the park, there aren't any more fences or gates or anything like that. So we should be able to get some really clear photos of the wildlife. Probably would have been great to have her 100 to 400. It is a lens that I bring every single time I travel. We do have the 70 to 200. Chris and I are probably gonna be swapping out with that lens. My opinion, we're actually talking about this for the first time right now. I think we should probably, do you wanna put it on my camera? The R4. Sure. At least we can crop in really heavily with that camera, so. Yeah, we'll probably just swap out, take turns uh, shooting, take turns driving. That is the plan, Stan. Hopefully we get some good wildlife photos. Cool. So we're walking out to this lake right now to attempt to find some more elk, bison, whatever. We're ready to go. I just hope we see some. It seems very quiet right now. This is looking like it could be an authentic bison poo. Look how big that is underneath. I think this entire mound is a poo. One eternity later. So what happened? We literally have been driving around for an hour and a half trying to find any single animal. So at this point right now, we literally turned out of the park because we were like, okay, the only animals that we saw the entire time were on the side of the road on the side of the highway. So we're literally going back to the highway. First turn, a minute outside of the park. Bustle, a bunchel, a bunchel of bison. Literally that's where the bison are. They're not in there. They're not in the park. They're literally all huddled together. Probably all of them in this random field over here by the side of the highway. I can't put this in the video if there isn't an animal. I need content, so I'm gonna show you the bustle of bisons. You guys, I don't even know if you can see this. They're like out here. See those little black things that look like boulders? That's that's the bison. There's no way we're getting a photo, but we're gonna get out and try. <laughs> you are gonna be relying so heavily on those megapixels. Sometimes, guys, you can't get the shot. It's very defeating. I feel a little defeated. Our next stop is to a distillery. We're gonna do a tour and a tasting. Let's go. And we'll get some actual photos there. 
All right, so we're about to go into the Strathcona Spirits Distillery. So I'm taking off the 70 to 200 with my talons. This is proving to be a challenge, a talon challenge. So I've got the 24 to 70 on because I'll probably just need something that is really quick to zoom in and out to get some really close up detailed shots, some shallow focus. And then I might need to go wide a few times. So that's why it's 24 to 70. Great handy dandy roaming lens. I'm gonna put a strap on it because I also have to bring in this guy to be able to vlog. This is, shameless plug, the slide light strap for my merch with my little LP logo on it. And uh, I am gonna bring in my backpack because it has the, my backpack, my brevity jumper bag because it has the 35 1.4 in it. And I may use that if we sit down and have a drink. I may whip that out, take some more stylized photos. But first, it's a pretty cute building. So I'll set this guy up so we can film a little BTS of Chris taking some photos of me in front of the building because we don't have a lot of material today. So I really want to try to milk this location as much as possible because ultimately the the tourism board just wants a full well-rounded look of our experience doing this tour and what the drinks taste like and us having a good time so we try to take as many photos as possible because whatever we don't end up posting in feed for this we'll end up posting as stories just to tell the story of our time here so what do you need to tell everyone at home where you were you need an exterior establishing exterior establishing shot so that's what we're doing <laughs> So we're here, we're in the brewery. You can smell that it's definitely a brewery. Well, it's a distillery. Oh, sorry, distillery, distillery, distillery. Oh, uh, yeah, she was, look, she was eyeing you. I was gonna she say was so. about, She was about I said to it right all the way up. You said brewery and then I corrected you in the car. Now I'm messing up. It's my fault. So you brew before you distill. So technically, I'm kind of, I'm still wrong. <laughs> some food yeah Get some food. we got some great stuff in there uh we really just tried to it's so nice when it's like dim lighting it was a little challenging so that's why i switched to this lens but we got lots of little detaily shots lots of some beautiful bokeh because there were Christmas lights in the background. So find when you're in a small space like that, just shoot through everything, get behind stuff, get behind the counter. Go in the like, bathroom. Yeah, go in the bathroom. <laughs> you can use like, there's so many things to frame your photos and uh, so don't get discouraged because it's a small space. Sometimes that is honestly even easier to shoot. So we had a good time in there. We did. I think we definitely got some posts. I feel a lot better now. <sighs> you always feel, more, well, like once that. you get at least one post, you're like chill. We're good. You know, we got a couple more days. We're gonna get at least one more. What's happening? We're getting Mexican food in Edmonton because we clearly missed Tulum. So Chris says there's like a path over here or something that looks cool. I have no idea what this looks like. So I didn't know what to bring because only he's seen what it looks like. So he said a 35 is fine. So we have a 35 again. So let's go take a look and see if it's worthwhile. I feel like this would be a cool photo. Now that we're here, Chris was incorrect. The 35 is not wide enough, which I knew he was gonna be wrong. So we need to put the 16 and 35 on now. We're also going to put the camera on a tripod. We're gonna put it in the snow over here and it'll be a nice low angle because there's all these rocks in the foreground that are being lit up by the bridge. Those are gonna be in the foreground. Nice wide f-stop so that everything is in focus. We're gonna take some pictures of the bridge. Hopefully it looks cool. Yeah. One thing that you want to take into consideration is like, yes, take the photo of the thing that is significant at the place. So in Edmonton, this bridge, pretty significant. Anything with cool lights on it, it's going to look a little better at night. Daytime photos, sunrise photos. Chris really wants some sunrise. He's tried to get a sunset tonight, didn't really work out. Any unique weather condition, anything that's unique such in that moment, in such as ice, which is kind of what we're experiencing right now, is a cool different way to showcase that location. And like definitely get your standard wide shot that you've seen that you know you want, because like everyone has that when you've seen pictures of like a bridge or a tower or like a landscape, you want that certain photo. But then try to get something a little bit different and a little bit 
bit weird that's you know has your own spin on it so i always start off taking like the standard we call them low hang bangs in this part of the woods <laughs> a low hang banger shot because <laughs> it's like your your easy banger shot and then try to take something else that's like weird and cool and different because you never know which photo you're gonna end up liking more these are a classic the tourism board will love these it's a classic classic travel photo Oh, hello there. It's me, Lizzie from the future, just editing some photos from this very trip. Before we move on, I just wanna mention the sponsor of today's video, which is the Professional Photographers of America. If you're a regular here on this channel, you've probably seen me mention the nonprofit PPA in previous videos. And today I wanna to tell you about their signature conference and expo, Imaging USA 2022. This photography conference will be held in National Harbor in Maryland from January 16th to 18th, 2022. Now, Imaging USA is the largest and longest running photography conference. And this year you have a chance to score a free pass to the expo, but more on that in a second. There will be over 50,000 square feet of pure photography inspiration. Plus, you'll have access to over 100 exhibitors featuring the latest photography products, services, demos, and more. If you sign up for a PPA membership today, you'll get an all access pass to the Imaging USA conference, which includes platform classes, keynotes, as well as evening activities, parties, the Imaging USA Expo, and other special events. I'm super excited to let you know that I will be attending the conference in January, so I hope to see some of you there as well. So to collect your free ticket to the expo, click the link in my description and be sure to use promo code SI underscore LP. But if you want everything that the conference has to offer, sign up to PPA today. Now back to the video. <laughs> Good morning, it is day two. It is 8.30 a.m. We tried to get up earlier because we really, we really do want to see some, some bisons and some, some elkies. The sun is really not even up yet. Oh, the clouds are looking good. Okay, all right. Shit just got real, ladies and gents. We're I gotta drive safely. Dronage. We're gonna do- Are we a... doing dronage and then bisons? Yes. We're doing dronage and then bison. And just so you guys know, this is not on the itinerary. We only have one thing on our itinerary today and that's to check into our really cool Airbnb later. We're staying at like a dome hotel, a dome Airbnb. I'm very excited about that. The photos we're gonna get there are insane. So we'll definitely walk you through those. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do some dronage. Look, it's gonna get real. Oh, we, better hurry. we are going to fly the drone. Are you doing anything in particular, setting up any NDs? I'm taking out the SD card from the previous flights because it's a smart thing to do that on the off chance that we do potentially lose a drone, at least we have all the footage from the previous day. The last thing that you would want is to lose a crucial storyline or crucial photo. Highly recommend that you just buy a ton of micro SDs. That way you won't lose your footage. So Chris is in a little bit of a rush right now because soon it looks like all the color in the sky is gonna be gone. So he's trying to get it up as fast as possible. For your cityscapes, it does look better if you're shooting it either first thing in the morning or in the evening, you're gonna get the best color rather than midday harsh sunlight. So that's what we try to do. Trying to have some nice movement in the front there. This guy's looking nice. I feel like it's gonna look a lot nicer this way. A lot of side to side movement is good. It's good if you do two kind of cross movements. So if you're panning to the right with your camera going left, so kind of crossing. I don't know how to explain that. While you're going to the right, have your camera turn to the left, because then it'll keep focused on one subject and it looks like you're kind of rotating around it. It's just nice to have two movements going at once rather than just like straight up or down. And usually I think like, okay, if I'm flying up, if that's my movement, then I pan down and I kind of cross two opposite movements. That's a good like rule of thumb if you're just learning how to get more cinematic drone footage. The wind chill my bro almost knocked the camera off. Whoa! Okay, so we've got some beautiful snow coverage and now these roads yesterday that looked very bland and dead look very pretty and snowy. So we figured at the very least we can get some pictures of each other standing in the road. Another low hang bang. Super compressed with the 7200, just trying to get Chris at different depths. Tried to add some movement to it by getting him to run and kick some snow and stuff like that. Bison. 
So we're gonna try to get close enough, but not too close so that we don't uh, die or disturb them in any way, but mostly die. They're like, it's so close. You see them? That was the look of death right there. <laughs> Do you see them? Yeah, it's awesome. The sun's a bit weird and they're pretty dark animals so they were hard to see but there were a few instances where the animal eye focus did pick up on mine and it, it could track it but most of the time it couldn't so I just had to switch my focus mode and pretty much assign directly where I wanted it to be. They're not really going anywhere so it's not like we had to track them very hard. It was more like just timing the moment where uh, they looked up and their heads were towards us and this is usually something like when you're traveling a big thing is like oh the wildlife you can see in a destination so especially from a photography perspective it's cool to be able to at least capture that because the tourism board makes them happy it's a unique like we don't have any photos of bison so it's unique for us in our feed and something that our audiences will definitely be interested in so yeah i'm glad we made the extra effort and came out again today Welcome to our dome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the dome. It is really cute. There's lots of activities for us to do in here tonight. We have some wine, we've got coffee. They actually left us literally everything in here. This place is awesome. I wish we were staying longer than one night. I feel like that's the trend on every one of these trips. So now because we're only here for one night, I feel like Chris and I are both panicking because we're like, we want to hang out, but we also need to shoot photos. So we're trying to think what's going to make sense to shoot at night, what's going to make sense to shoot tomorrow morning. So we were just talking about this. So that's why we pulled out the camera to have this conversation right now. I think we should, like what has to happen at night, we just took some detail shots of all the little elements around in here. Um, I did them with the 35. I think we should do definitely an exterior because you went outside, you said you think there's enough light. Yeah, for and, sure, for a long uh, exposure, for, for sure. For a long exposure. So we'll get a little nighttime shot of the dome from the outside. And then we're probably just going to take some very lifestyle hangout shots of us actually having a good time in here because that's something else that's important for tourism boards and for two people that are promoting a destination is to actually enjoy it and take photos of us actually enjoying it not fake enjoy it yeah so you it's know? not a lie like yeah. on these trips we're actually having fun we're not just like throwing snow and being like look look at us playing in the snow even though we hate it tomorrow morning we'll shoot definitely some more exteriors but also maybe a few more like hosey stylized shots in here like i might sit in one of these chairs with a coffee and like try and look cute you Look know. cute. Come on, work it, baby. Not, no. Work it and so work it and work it. Come on. Are we shooting at exteriors? Do I have to put pants back on? Yeah, you gotta put pants on. Why do you even take them off? There's lots of activities for us to do in here tonight. Oh, we're staying in a dome cabin. Just assume that they wouldn't have heat. I brought cozies. I got Long John Silvers. Is your heart too cold? Yeah. snow in the bed? Maybe. We were just outside. How did our outside shoot go, Chris? It went really well. I think it went really well. I'm sorry we didn't vlog it, but it's just so cold. <laughs> okay, wine time. Wine time. Wine and dine. Let's go. Wine and dine. Good morning from the dome. We've already been outside taking some photos because we woke up to my favorite thing to wake up to in the entire world. It's a little something called hoarfrost. <laughs> hoarfrost, H-O-A-R. What a name, right? I shit you not, it's called hoarfrost. It's basically when like the snow kind of, kind of turns into little icicles on the trees and like it covers every branch in like frozen-y snow. You know in Photoshop where you can add stroke to the outside of your font? It's it basically stroke but hoarfrost. Or frost. We woke up to that. Chris literally whispered in my ear. He was like, good morning. Your favorite thing has happened. And literally my eyes were like, what? And he's like, hoarfrost. So I was like, oh, hot damn. Mostly we were alternating between the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200. We've got more than enough already, but you just want to have lots of options to choose from, not only to get approved by the tourism boards, but so we have lots of photos. It's always better to over deliver. Under promise, over deliver. Always. And if you always. post more, they usually invite you back. And we want to be invited back. Okay, and next coffee and pictures.
folks, I'm literally packing to go home, so obviously this video is over. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned something new about our tourism trips and taking travel photos. If you like this video, please give it a like down below. Subscribe if you're not already. And if you're not, if you haven't already, hit the notification bell to get notified for all future videos. And I will see you in the next one. I'm so tired. I hate packing. Thank <laughs> you.